So I've always been a very practical person when it comes to love and have never dwelled on things that ended in heartache. That's until a month ago. I'm at my computer checking my old email account and I see a message from a Trevor McLean. Now Trevor was a Jamaican guy I dated 20 years ago when I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area. I met Trevor when I was an undergraduate at film school. He was only a couple of years older than me, but Trevor was an adult. He, had, he was really sophisticated. He had a job in finance and lived in New York City. So I'd see him whenever he came to San Francisco for work. It was a real treat for me because I was living off beans in this crummy roach infested apartment in Oakland with roommates. But whenever Trevor came to town, I get to stay with him at his hotel and we'd, we'd dine at five star restaurants. And it was the 90s. So all the boys I knew were wearing baggy jabot jeans and Adidas jackets but Trevor was wearing tailored pants and cashmere sweaters. And we would debate about absolutely everything because he was so smart and well-traveled. Well, the fact is I was in love with Trevor, but I'm a practical girl. And I knew that I was just the one that he saw when he was in San Francisco for work. So there was no point. But now Trevor's smiling face is looking back at me from my inbox. And I'm remembering back to the last time we saw each other. It's the millennium New Year's Eve and Trevor's invited me to Jamaica to spend it with him. And I'm so excited to see him um, because it's been a month and as usual, he's organized everything and the car service takes me to the hotel in the grill. But when I arrive, he's acting really weirdly. I mean, he's usually a little bit aloof, but this time he's really off. And so my feelings are hurt. So I decide I'm just gonna numb them and get stoned except I am not a weed smoker and we're in Jamaica where it's the real deal. So from my first hit, I'm completely off my head and I'm looking at Trevor through this kind of haze of ganja smoke and I start thinking, maybe his metrosexuality, the fact that he's so aloof and that we have this long distance relationship, maybe Trevor isn't really into me at all. Maybe Trevor is gay. <sighs> Well, I don't really remember what else happens for the rest of the vacation. Trevor goes back to New York. I go back to the Bay Area. And, you know, being a practical girl, I move on with my life and I meet my ex-husband. But now it's 20 years later and I've no idea why Trevor's reached out to me, but I'm, you know, I'm really excited to talk to him again and a little bit curious to know if my gaydar is correct. And so I email him back, give him my phone number and suggest we set up a time to talk. Well, that Saturday we jump on the phone. But then Trevor immediately tells me that he was married for 15 years and that he's going through a divorce. Well, he was married to a woman, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I was wrong. But then he tells me that they have a seven-year-old son and he's worried how the divorce will affect him. Well, I was also married for 15 years and my daughter was eight when we went through our divorce. So then the conversation becomes about parenting and his sexuality is totally irrelevant. Well, at this point, we've been on the phone for a couple of hours and we have to get back to our kids. So I, we say our goodbyes and I think, oh, oh, well, I'll never know. But then the following Saturday, Trevor texts me again and asks me if I'm free for another chat. And this time I reply, yes, I am. And I go straight to the question. And I say, are you gay? And he starts laughing at me and he says, no, I'm not gay. And then I feel like a total idiot for getting high and just imagining the whole thing. And he says to me, listen, I emailed you because I want to ask you a question. What did you think about me back then? And so I say, well, you know, I, apart from our disastrous last vacation together, I have nothing but wonderful memories of you. He says, no, no, no. I mean, but what did you think of me? Well, I tell him that I could never really read him as he was always so aloof but that I had really strong feelings for him, even though I knew I was just the girl that he saw when he was in San Francisco for work. Now to this, Trevor becomes very silent. And then he says, the thing is, I was never in San Francisco for work. I didn't have any business in the Bay Area. I only ever went to San Francisco to see you. From the first moment that I met you, 
all my boys were like, who is this girl? And I just said, she was the most amazing person that I've ever met. And I started thinking that this relationship could never work if I lived in New York and you lived in San Francisco. So I started trying to find a, a way that I could find a job in the Bay Area, but it was gonna be so hard because I didn't know anyone there, there except for you. When I invited you to Jamaica, I was gonna tell you that I was gonna to move to San Francisco so that we could be together. But then when I was face to face with you, I froze. Well, when I got back to New York, my boys were like, so what happened, what'd she say? And all I could tell them was I fucked it up. Well, Trevor tells me that he's really sorry that he was never able to open up to me and that for the past 20 years, he's had moments where he's thought about me and how different his life would have been if he'd just been able to tell me that he loved me. And after the call finishes, I, at first I'm in shock. And then I'm just so angry thinking about all the years we wasted being with other people, living these parallel lives when we could have just been together if we'd just been able to tell each other how we felt instead of being so bloody practical, then maybe I'd be standing here telling you a, a love story instead of practically one. But then that's a good thing about life, that even practical people can have a second chance at love. Thank you. <laughs>